10 Best Transfers in Football History Did you know that Newcastle United were once offered a chance to sign Zinedine Zidane when he was playing in League One as early as 1995? Transfers in football are an extremely complicated part of the beautiful game. They can often make or break a club's fortunes, sign the right player for the right price and you have an instant edge on the competition, but sign the wrong player and he could destroy the club's finances and the dressing room harmony. Managers like Sir Alex Ferguson, Jurgen Klopp and Arsene Wenger have all been lauded for their amazing shrewdness in the transfer market and they've all experienced success as a result. But what are some of the best transfers in football history? In this video, we are going to look at what we think are the 10 very best transfers in the history of football. And if you think we missed anyone out, then feel free to leave a comment below. And be sure to watch to the end, as number one might surprise you. Okay, so are you ready? If so, then click the like button to support the channel. Go grab a nice cold beer and let's get into it. Number 10. Freddy Lundberg in 1998, Arsene Wenger showed just why Arsenal's skid apartment was the best in the business when the Gunners paid Swedish side Holmstad £4.1 million to acquire the services of Freddy Lundberg. The Swede signing was welcomed with minimum fanfare since he was plucked from obscurity. There was no pressure or weight of expectation either. However, Lundberg became quite a creative presence and a regular goalscorer for the London Giants. During the 2001-2002 campaign, he became the league's player of the season after scoring 12 goals. Regardless of what people say, Lundberg is still the most successful Swedish player in the history of top flight English football. Number 9. Claude Makélélé In the summer of 2003, Real Madrid decided not to hand Makélélé a financial package his performances warranted. The French international was the engine that drove Real Madrid to many titles. However, Florentino Perez's thriftiness was Chelsea's gain as they spent just £18 million for the defensive midfielder. The arrival of Jose Mourinho at the dugout was what changed everything for the player and the Blues who would enjoy Premier League, FA Cup and League Cup successes in the next five years. Makaleli was the first midfield destroyer of his kind and so dominating was his presence that even today we like to call the defensive midfielder role the Makaleli role. Number 8. Pablo Zabaleta In 2008, Manchester City paid Espanyol only £7.8 million to secure the services of Argentine international Pablo Zabaleta. Interestingly enough, he was signed just the day before the Abu Dhabi United group became the new owners of Manchester City. And while his signing was overshadowed by the arrival of Robinho from Real Madrid, we all know which of these two men became a fan favourite. While many prominent signings failed around him, Zabaleta made the right-back spot his own. A buccaneering fullback, the Argentine international was a vital member of the City squad that tasted Premier League success in 2012 on the last day of the campaign against QPR. Number 7. Alan Shearer It is very rare to consider a transfer a hugely successful one if it doesn't come with some silverware. However, Alan Shearer bucks the trend here. He left Blackburn Rovers for Newcastle United in 1996 for £15 million. In fact, the Magpies beat Manchester United to his signature. While some might call it a bad decision on the player's part, Shearer did show the club's supporters how good he was, scoring 148 goals in 303 league games, and also shining in European competitions whenever given the opportunity. One of the greatest strikers of all time, Shearer might not have won anything at the time in Weir, but imagine how difficult things could have been for Newcastle had they not signed him all those years ago. Number 6. Felipe Coutinho Liverpool paid Inter Milan £11.7 million to sign Coutinho in the summer of 2013. The young Brazilian arrived at Anfield as a hot prospect and became a man in front of the cop. Twice voted Liverpool player of the season, Coutinho didn't win any trophies with the Merseyside Giants, but his performances were phenomenal to say the least. Eventually, he decided to make his dream move to Barcelona in January 2018 for £142 million. Safe to say that Liverpool made a lot of profit on a player who might have won a lot had he resisted the urge to swap Anfield for Camp Nou. Number 5. Nemanja Vidic During the January transfer window of 2006, Sir Alex Ferguson decided to sign Nemanja Vidic from Spartak Moscow for £12.5 million. The Serbian's arrival was exactly what the Red Devils needed to get the best out of Rio Ferdinand. His bulldog-like resilience complemented Ferdinand's class perfectly. 
Vidic ended up becoming one of the greatest defenders of all time and is still the only defender to win the player of the season two times. With him at the heart of defence, United won five Premier League titles and one Champions League final, which is not a bad turnover at all. Do you think that Manchester United would have struggled without Vidic in defence? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Number 4. Cristiano Ronaldo In 2003, Manchester United played a friendly with Sporting Lisbon, where the likes of Gary Neville and others were mesmerised by the performances of a teenage winger, so much so that they begged Sir Alex to sign him up immediately. And the legendary Scott complied by paying the Portuguese giants £12 million for Cristiano Ronaldo. Little did they know that the gangly teen would end up becoming one of the greatest players the game has ever seen and would guide United to the sort of unprecedented success that would make the legendary squads of United's yesteryears proud. During his first stint at Old Trafford, Ronaldo became one of the most lethal wingers in the game. He was scoring goals for fun and lifting trophies season after season. He won the player of the season twice, won the golden boot, was awarded his first Ballon d'Or title in England before leaving for Real Madrid, where he enjoyed even more success. Number 3. Mohamed Salah In 2017, Liverpool bought Mohamed Salah from Roma for roughly £39 million. The Egyptian arrived in England with a point to prove after struggling during his time with Chelsea, when he was never really given much of a chance. Salah's arrival coincided with the sort of success Liverpool had not enjoyed during the Premier League era. The Egyptian has been scoring goals for fun since then, has won the Premier League title, lifted the Champions League trophy, has picked up numerous accolades and is not done yet. Imagine where Liverpool would be without Salah's goals. Number 2. Virgil van Dijk now the most crucial thing about signing an expensive player is that you need to make sure the player doesn't get bogged down by the heavy price tag and actually performs the way an expensive signing should. In the past, a lot of players have crumbled under the weight of expectation. Manchester United are a prime example of signing an expensive player only to see them struggle. The likes of Paul Pogba and Harry Maguire were bought for a lot of money and both men have never justified their hefty price tags. Therefore, it was essential for both the club and Virgil van Dijk to ensure the transfer did not become a source of embarrassment. Southampton received around £75 million for parting ways with the Dutch defender in 2018, and Jurgen Klopp got the missing link he had been searching for for so long. Of course, we can say that van Dijk's influence is as impressive as Kevin De Bruyne's, and we do feel bad about not including the Belgian in the list. However, with or without De Bruyne, City have shown that they can continue enjoying success. But Liverpool badly needed a leader of men at the back, and Van Dijk's arrival is one of the main reasons why the Reds are one of the best sides on the planet. The Dutch international is a game changer. He rarely makes mistakes, doesn't like to be dribbled against, and also scores the odd goal. Due to his influence, the Reds have won the league, conquered Europe, and are slated to win more trophies in the coming years. Last season, when Van Dijk was injured, Liverpool's title defence faltered and City lifted the trophy quite easily. This time around, Van Dijk's presence ensured that the battle went down to the wire. So how can you not consider Van Dijk one of the best transfers in football history? Number 1. Eric Cantona OK, so this particular name is going to create quite a divide in the comment section, but hear us out first. Before Cantona arrived, Manchester United were not considered a team that would win trophies. The English top division had just been rebranded and United were not even considered favourites to win the league. However, Sir Alex Ferguson had other ideas. The Scottish tactician decided to convince Eric Cantona into leaving Leeds United halfway through the season for just £1.6 million. The eccentric Frenchman's arrival ushered United into a new era of prosperity and a lot of polish since silverware started pouring into the cabinets at Old Trafford. During his time at the club, Cantona became a league champion four times, scored some sensational goals and even found time to kung fu kick a fan. He retired at the peak of his powers, on his own terms, and is still remembered with the same reverence as the likes of Sir Matt Busby, Sir Bobby Charlton, George Best, and many others. So guys, this was our take on some of the best transfers of all time. Of course, there were so many other players who deserved to be on the list, so feel free to let us know which players you think should have made the cut in the comments below. 
Also, make sure to watch this video linked below. And if you like our content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on your notifications. On the screen now should be another good video worth watching. So click on that video and we will see you in the next one.